At its inception, the faculty in the physical education department at the University of Laverne served dual roles. They were both professors and coaches and all shared one office. Athletics and the academic portion, just physical education, yes. Or maybe MSS, who knows, or maybe it, it was came hyper. In after that. <laughs> <laughs> the MSS came in afterwards, but they were all together. It was more like a family. The two departments were just so meshed at the time. Yeah, yes. Um, One big room, too, as I remember. Yes, exactly. I don't know how we did it, <laughs> but all the coaches fit in that one room where the campus safety is right now. Uh, when you came, to, they hired me. Their priorities were teacher first, coach second. And as it worked out, uh, I was assigned to coach cross country mm. and tennis, I see. and 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 also teach a full load. So uh, that's that, that was pretty uh, strenuous. Pretty strenuous during uh, a number of years that we worked in. Sometimes uh, uh, we had had to serve as a head coach in a minimum of two sports. Wow! And and in certain occasions. Some of us uh, was a head coach in three sports, as well as teach a full load in, uh, in the kinesiology department, which was then physical education. Physical. It was in the, the mid-90s or so that you started to see that separation of athletics and what ultimately becomes kinesiology or um, exercise science or uh, still physical education. Um, uh, the, the, the more complex the nature of both athletics and teaching has become, the more it, it seemed uh, appropriate to get specialists in both areas. And so I know when I was coaching and teaching, I had a, a full-time faculty load, and I coached two sports, men's and women's swimming, and wow. I was the aquatics director. And um, it... it the joke with my wife when swim season start was, I'll see you in the spring when swim season's over because um, you taught your classes, you practice in the morning, you practice in the afternoon, you recruited at night and the weekends. And um, so it became more and more complex um, to recruit students as, as athletes. Um, and then the expectations and the roles of faculty have, have shifted from um, primarily teaching and coaching to now uh, and teaching and research and service, and um, that really started to create that separation, I think, between athletics and, and uh, kinesiology type departments. Their workload was just too much for them to do, so they started to hire just coaching mm. and trying to, and needed to make it full time so that we attract the better coaches. And then it just started to, and then the PE department started to hire faculty that just talked. So it was a, it was a long, long process, but it it took a while. Mm. And it, um, gradually, all the uh, the employee the staff were separated. Mm. The once integrated physical education athletic department was split, uh, and and began to hire hire teachers only, or professors only, and, and coaches only in, in separate departments. The, the, the two departments um, started to split. Yes, yes. So the coaches just coached, and the, the professors just taught. Just professed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and they, um, you know, they, they tried to, to lessen the workload, but as the separation began, it it just it felt different. It didn't feel like a a family. It was it was this is yours and this is theirs. Yeah, when I first came, I think we were teaching to coaches. Oh. And when I came out of Cal Poly, we were teaching to physical educators. I see. And I kind of steerheaded that. We're teaching them for a $1,200 to $3,500 a year job, not to something that's going to help them to, and be able to sustain a living. Uh, and, Rex, and Rex definitely agreed, so we changed it to more of the physical education curriculum. Oh, we've moved um, 
almost all programs were physical education in their foundings. Um, physical education has uh, its roots in linking to medical science and um, the notion of the whole body wellness uh, initiative. Um, so many programs have evolved similarly to Laverne, starting out as PE, um, the terms exercise science, um, movement sports science, um, health, physical education, recreation, you'll see those um, across the country. Mm. Um, more recently, kinesiology has um, become popular as a, an umbrella term. Um, the study of human movement is kinesiology, and, and within that, all the um, special sub-disciplines kind of come to light. So exercise physiology, athletic training, um, sports sociology, sports psychology, sports management, physical education still, um, you'll find those all under the umbrella now of kinesiology. And so we felt as a department that that term better represented what we did as an institution and better aligned with what we find um, across the state of California and the region. Um, and so that was the impetus behind um, changing to kinesiology. We uh, encourage our students that are in anything that has to do with physical fitness to go into kinesiology mm. um, and get the degree in kines. You can, you can kind of focus whatever you want to do after that. You know, once you got the degree, you got it. When you go to grad school, you can really hone in on things that really, really interest you because the field of health and fitness is so great. I mean, everything from the actual training of people to nutrition, physical therapy, occupational therapy, it's very vast. Yes. You can pick something in. We actually kind of have three parts, um, and so within kinesiology, students can go teacher track. Um, that's probably our smallest cohort currently. The second track is our athletic training, and for many years that was the dominant force in the, the major. Um, we have a good history of preparing and certifying athletic trainers, um, and it's, it's doing well still. So as they get through the athletic training program, they are... Um, out and getting clinical experience that is um, developing their skills as practitioners. A third of, a third of our students right now are working with University of Laverne athletic teams. I see. Um, as part of their, as their clinical experience and our uh, staff are all what we call preceptors. So they've been um, uh, certified as preceptors so that they can evaluate the students' skills and the students can work with them. We also have affiliated agreements with several high schools, several junior colleges, and with Casa Colina Centers for Rehab. Mm. So our students all do a rehab intensive clinical in their senior year. Mm. And a lot of them choose Casa Colina, some of them choose to do their rehab here. Um, but our students, um, in those five clinicals, um, classes they have, um, they usually do at least one on our level on campus with our athletic training preceptors. And we require them all to do one at a high school mm -hmm. because that's where the jobs will be, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. especially when California gets licensure for athletic trainers. <laughs> um, and it's a different population. You're working with minors, so you have to do things a little bit differently yeah. at the high school. And crazy. Yes, crazy kids. yes. You really yeah. have to watch out for things at the high school. And then um, they have options with several of the local junior colleges. We're getting ready to move that program from a bachelor's degree to a master's degree mm. as required by the accrediting body. So all athletic training programs are moving to a master's level as the entry point. But most athletic training programs at the master's level re require some sort of kinesiology background. And so a, a degree in kinesiology um, will be sufficient to jump then into a master's. So it's a self-contained master's designed to get you certified. Um, and so you won't have a, a lot of necessary prereqs, but having a background in human anatomy and human physiology and exercise physiology and probably a course in, in care and prevention of athletic injury um, to give you a, a sense of what the, the degree is about um, will be sufficient to jump into that master's level. But our largest cohort now is what we call our health and human performance. And oh. so increasingly our majors are looking to go into the allied health field. And so they want to go into physical therapy or occupational therapy or, or now physician assistants that we've got that here at Laverne. It's piqued the interest in our majors. We get students that want to go into chiropractic and nursing and a few med students. And what they find is um, we're still very heavy in the science requirements. Um, so they get the scientific background they need as prerequisites for those 
programs, but we look at everything through the lens of the human body. The focus of our, uh, of our kinesiology department is quite different than it was. During our periods of time, in, uh, at the peak of that, our times, mm -hmm. uh, basically we were uh, teacher preparation uh, department. Mm. And, and, and we have placed many physical education teachers and coaches in, in the communities surrounding uh, Laverne. So the focus now is, is completely different. Uh, the university uh, is, has become, we think, uh, very research-oriented. And there's nothing wrong with, with being research-oriented. Uh, it, it's, it was a transition that the department had to make. But in most professors, the, the research component has really increased uh, from, from when I first started. I think. I think the students are excited about it. We, we started this research thing back in, back when, even when Nancy Blickenstaff, uh, because we converted from doing uh, comprehensive exams to uh, research projects. Our, our typical model was oral presentations, um, and as we've grown in majors, we've gone from about 260 when I arrived to close to 400 now. Um, it became increasingly difficult to schedule, um, you know, 30 minutes of, of oral presentations for all of our students. And so this year we decided to give that as an option to students that wanted to present in an oral format, um, but the majority of them chose to do it in a poster format. And it was neat to see them all um, spread out in the gym upstairs and um, faculty and students were able to come and observe and ask questions. And, um, I think it went well. Dr. Sarah Dunn and Dr. Megan Grinkowitz have, have really led the way on getting students to go to professional conferences. Um, so every year we have a cohort of students um, go to the Southern California Conference for Undergraduate Research, or SCUR. Um, and again, with this year we had five or six go and present there. We had a number of our athletic training students take their senior project research and present at the California Athletic Training Association um, Conference. Um, just this past weekend, and mm. so increasingly we're seeing our faculty look for ways to get our students to, to think about how do they take their research and, and disseminate it. And it's a great experience for our faculty and a, and a fabulous experience for our students as well. Well, Fitness for Life is a more overall health. It's not just physical. And I think it, it brings in a lot of cognitive things. And it still keeps that social and physical aspect because you have to do things mm. on apparatus and so, etc. But it brings in the health components of stress and nu nutrition. And so it's better than just an activity class where you just learn maybe yoga moves, mm. positions, and, mm. and or whatever. So it's more of a wellness course than just an activity course would bring in. All students at the University of Laverne have to fulfill um, what most recently was called um, lifelong fitness. Uh, I think it's now transitioned to lifelong wellness as the terminology in the GE. And so most do that through our Kinesiology 001 class, which is called Fitness for Life. Um, and it's a hybrid course, so it's half didactic, learning about nutrition and health and wellness across the seven discipline, or seven dimensions of health. And part of it is activity still. We want to have them learn how to be active movers and learn how to value the role of, of physical activity and wellness um, in their overall life wellness. And so it's, it's great that Laverne holds on to that. Uh, many institutions across the country have lessened that expectation or eliminated the expectation of movement. Um, I can remember schools... Um, having a swimming requirement. If you couldn't pass a swimming requirement, you didn't graduate. <laughs> um, for many students, it was a gymnastics requirement. If they couldn't do their balance beam routine, then they, they stayed around until they could. I really feel that uh, I'm a huge fitness advocate where I want my student athletes, if I have them for four years, you know, anywhere from one, two, three, four years, when they leave, they have the rest of their life. Yeah. And I want them to try to develop some strategies and be able to not be able to go to any gym anywhere in the country and be able to use the implement to get some exercise out of it. Oh. 
So it kind of for me, it goes well, far beyond the couple of years that I have them. I want them to go the rest of their life being able to do things. And of course, your facilities have greatly changed too. Right. Uh, it, the demands for uh, the kinesiology program mean that you have all kinds of, of labs and so forth that just didn't exist 10 years ago. Right. Yeah. Whether it's the TRXs, the, the sleds, the sandbags, the barbells, the bumper plates, you know, some of this stuff, I remember when I first started working at Laverne, that this ex, the, the, the fitness equipment was that I asked one day, I think I asked Pam on a cake, Pam, when did we get this stuff? She goes, the early 90s. It was like 2004. So that stuff was 12, 13, 14, 15 years old. And it was so old that nobody serviced it anymore. Oh. <laughs> and so you're like, it's talking about like having a car that's so old that nobody makes, nobody can fix it for you. Uh -huh. And so um, it has really been interesting over time to watch everything evolve and, um, kind of how we do things and how society's trends have affected what we do oh. in terms of stuff. Yeah, so we've been fortunate to um, uh, enhance our curriculum through um, adding equipment that students will see when they get out in the field. And so um, since I've been here, we've been able to remodel our lab space, um, really double it in size and uh, add significant equipment, um, metabolic cart to allow for um, resting and exercise-based VO2 um, oxygen consumption studies. Um, we've added a bod pod, which is a gold standard for body composition, mm. um, and a number of modalities that allow students to think about blood pressure and heart rate and um, blood lactate levels and blood um, glucose levels. And um, so we've been fortunate over the last five to ten years to add significant equipment that um, have really enhanced what our students get. I remember being in Don Rell's office one day and he takes a phone call, says, yeah, love it, great, okay, we'll send someone over, click. Next thing I know, um, I'm in a car, not myself, I was helping somebody unload these dumbbells. Someone brought them over to us from the Chino State Penitentiary and I was like, there's gotta be some DNA on these from, you know, them doing something with these that, <laughs> they said they were getting rid of the dumbbells because the inmates were getting too strong. Oh. <laughs> So I've sold it over the years that our dumbbells were used by uh, prisoners. And, you know, we're going to get prison strong. And so it's kind of funny. <laughs> uh, they have allowed me to grow the program and continue to get things necessary to work with student athletes, not only the athletes, but also the students. Um, we're looking at ways to get our students. Um, the skills and knowledge necessary to jump into whatever is next. And so if they're leaving us and going to recreation departments to be recreational leaders, or they're jumping into the industry to be personal trainers or strength and conditioning coaches, we want to give them the skills necessary to be successful. My last four assistants, two of them are head strength coaches in the conference, wow. other institutions. One of them is a head strength coach at a college. And the last one just got a full-time job as assistant strength coach at Menlo College. So wow. along with my growth and the growth of the program, the people within the program are actually going out and doing, doing good things. And Students can leave us as certified personal trainers because they've taken the test necessary to do that, or certified strength and conditioning coaches, um, or for athletic training that they are board certified in athletic training. And um, So that's been our goal as we look at changing the curriculum is to get our students those relevant skills that makes them um, competitive as they jump into the next level, whether it be graduate school or, or directly into the industry. There is a drive by the faculty and the administration to continually improve at Laverne, mm -hmm. and so there's not a complacency that Laverne way is sufficient. Um, there's always looking for um, how do we enhance that Laverne way and Laverne experience and um, so uh, I think those are good things that are happening here for sure. You know, as we enter this 125th year of celebration, um, PE, exercise science, movement, sports science, kinesiology has been one of the corner programs um, at the University of Laverne since then. And uh, um, it's neat to see the, the growth that it's had over the years.